are coming. May I just remind may I just remind parents who have not brought their children or their kids to be dedicated in the church pray for kindly do that because it's Christ's instruction and counsel that he gives to his servants. I want us to read the book of Matthew chapter 19 verse verse 14 I think in 13 14 and 15 it is Donnelly and Labella and this is Damaris, the father is not with us, I hope probably he might have come also. But uh, as a church, probably they have having visitors. As a church, Seventh-day Adventist church, we do not baptize children. from the Bible says. And because the church, Seventh-day Adventist church, is a church that follows the book, and the book that follows is the Bible, then that's why we dedicate children in the hands of the Lord. And so the Bible says, Then, were there brought unto him little children, that he put his hands on them, and, and the disciples rebuked them. Probably they were seeing children to be to bother the master. But when Jesus confirmed so that he said, Suffer little children and forbid them not to come unto me. For of such is the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. How I wish and it's my prayer that when it becomes in the matter of kingdom, we may behave as young children who are ready to obey, to trust, and to follow each and every precept given to them. But all the way to for Sabbath, most of the time. We want to remain as other, as other people, as people who cannot be instructed as people who cannot be told. But the word of Christ is that we need to be transformed when it comes to the matter of kingdom to behave and to have that children mind. Mind that is ready to obey and to trust. And therefore, Jesus took the children that were brought to him and he laid his hands on them and he prayed for them. After three that business, our master departed and he showed an example to be followed. And that one he led to the disciples and the leaders of the church. That they should not baptize the children, but pray for them and dedicate them for the kingdom of heaven. And so, may I take this opportunity to call upon uh, and uh, we and uh, Nyangara, I can see him, and, uh, and uh, Maranga, I have seen you somewhere. Come over and you assist me. But oh, they are two, they are two. But, but uh, come, come with the maranga and the, the, the away, so that we may word of prayer for these children of God. 
will go to our knees, but will give us the children that we may be able to pray. Okay, come, 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 bro. come, bro. come, bro. come, bro. come, 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 our Father and our God in heaven, we want to thank you for the blessing of children that are given unto these families. This is their desire that these children, as they grow up, they may grow upright, they may grow loving you, and hating things that are in this world. And so, Lord, our prayer is that, Lord, may you provide their spiritual needs as they grow up. And let them learn do and do that says the Lord. We want also to pray for the parents. As they want to have the God bless you. God bless you. Thank you so much. Go back to the seat. And then, uh, may I say that a, a, a loud cry was so loudly. And then, uh, don't wait for the speed. Bring them when they are still small and young. Amen? So that they may be begin their spiritual journey at their tender age. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pastor, for that service. Now, with the time, we want to go to the announcement. I request we take our bulletin and we go to the new announcement that are there in the bulletin. The week ending tonight was led by the AYS department. I kindly request the youth to rise up their dialogue through the entire week that we continue praying for them in the Lord bless you. All the youth kindly rise up. We can appreciate you in a special way, led by Brother Joshua. If you are not a youth, then you belong to the other side. Or all the youth can be like now. I thought there are so many. Oh, okay. They are taking time off. Huh? Now you have done a wonderful job. We want to thank the Lord for you. We pray that the Lord will continue blessing you. You may kindly sit down. They are organized for a contract. And actually they are proposing that uh, the contract may continue through the entire year. So we are requesting church members, they are approaching each and every one of us to enable them to continue with the project of a contract which they have started. The week beginning tonight will be led by the stewardship department. The councils are requested to remain behind at the divine house so that they can be able to organize for the week. Announcement number three very important. There is a scientific uh, research study which is organized by the health department from the EC. And they want to know why the Adventists who used to live very long, very long, hundred and above years, and now their life expectancy is quite short. And so they are doing that research. The research purpose will be picked the deep one uh, all of the church members, kindly pick one, fill it, and if you are able, we can collect it at the end of the service. If not, probably by the end of uh, the week, you bring it back so that it can be taken to the conference. Announcement number four is to do with the job opportunity. There is a job opportunity for the church for a church custodian. And so those who are interested, kindly you can apply 
and bring your application by the 20th of September, that is uh, the coming Friday. Drop it to church uh, pastor office or give it to the church plan. Kindly spread the word. The rest of the details are there on the notice so you can be able to read, be able to apply that job opportunity. And uh, that is the end of the announcement that I've indicated today for us. I therefore request we have a call to worship, which is coming from uh, our hymnal number 853. 853. If we are there, I request we call myself. I'll do the one it is written in normal writing, and then you respond in both.
May I invite the congregation that we listen to this prayer together. He opens This morning on my far right, which is your left, is Sister Judith Sigu, Alaska Reza. Say hi to you. Good morning. May you feel welcome at the feet of Jesus. Thank you, Sister Judith. Next to Next, next to her is Sister Janet Agasa. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Next to Sister Janet Agasa is Katrin Chekoske. Next to Katrin Chekoske is Sister Kerry Chanai. On my left, which is your right, we have Deborah Obisa. My name is Tom Nyarunda, and our speaker this morning uh, is one of our married youth in this church. His name is Willis Ombete. I'll ask him to stand up and smile at all of us as you smile back to him. And then uh, at the right time, he will get up and speak to us. And for now, the program continues uninterrupted. And may God bless you. Happy Sabbath. Happy, Happy day. Happy I request that we all rise in the scripture. Our scripture this morning is from the book of First John, First John 5, verse 12. I will read in your hearing, it says, He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. I will repeat. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. Amen. We're going to have our hymn of praise from Psalm number 327. We invite the Christians to come and lead us to the prayer, to the song. Thank you. 
onus is on duty to kind of rise up. Uh, we encourage as much as possible that uh, you give through the envelope and indicate clearly what you're giving or and also because the wallet is going cashless, we also encourage us to avoid as much as possible having with cash makes life easy for everyone. So we have a pay bill that we can use and as we prepare ourselves I'll ask any participants to do to rise up so that we pray, so that we can wait upon us. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for the privilege to give and return our time and offerings. Holy Father, we give because you gave us first. May you bless us, may you bless the work that is going to be done by the monies and the offerings that your people are going to give. For we ask this first in believing in Jesus' name. And as the exercise goes on, I'll invite the choristers to lead us in song number 366. Choristers, please come over 366.
many people? Three thousand people. Three thousand people were sent to the city of I. So when they went and they saw the soldiers of I pray, and they ran back. Imagine you've been sent to go and fight and overtake, and when you go instead of fighting, you do what? Turn your back and run to where you came from. So in the process, 36 people were. How many? 36 people. Now, Joshua cried to God and told him, Now why have we, have we been beaten and it's you who sent the city of Ai to destroy? Now it seems we will not go to the promised land. And imagine, Ai was the last city before they get to the promised land. So when he prayed, God told them they sin uh, amongst you. There is somebody who has done uh, some sin and I will know. It tells us that God hates sin. God hates sin. So when Akan uh, repented of that sin and his family were killed, the people of uh, the Israelites were able to overtake the city of Ai. What do you say? Amen. Because God, and when you repent, he forgives you and helps you overcome. So God hates sin. Who wants to be in heaven someday? Who wants to be in heaven someday? All of you want to be in heaven. And you, you want to be in heaven. You want to be in heaven. Good. So, if you want to be in heaven, don't sin. Don't do sin. So let us sun and then sun, sun, sun. Everybody, we want to know what we will do when we get to heaven. Yes. When I get to heaven, what will I do? Yes. 
Ethan and Lindsay. They will be on that. Do I need to repeat that one? What happened to repeat that? Don't repeat simple things, sure. In a big church like this, something is <laughs> We want to thank God for the opportunity that He has given us this morning once again to share His word. Just for the sake of those who had me speak before, of which majority I believe have, will tell you some five things about me. Number one, they will tell you that I'm a loud speaker. I speak too loudly, and brothers and sisters, when the power goes off, be sure yourself. You speak too loudly. Number two, they will tell you that I am a fast speaker. When I speak, I It's a youth Sabbath and we have visitors who are coming in for time. Lest you think that in this church we preach for long. Today for the sake of our visitors, please, I'll just take two hours. Hallelujah. Amen. Just for the sake of us. Visitors, if you had not come today, you would have seen. But we, uh, to make sure that you don't think that here we preach for long, so I'm only going to take two hours. Number four, they will tell you that I come from Louis. That is very important, especially when you are speaking in English. When you are speaking in what? In English, it is very important that sisters will affect me, and so please understand me. And finally, they will tell you that I'm not a pastor. I'm, a, I'm of a medical background, the word of God. Hallelujah. And therefore, I want to invite us to our message today. And the youth have chosen a theme, and the theme is divergent going against the tide of the contemporary culture. What a theme for our young people and for all of us this morning. And from this theme, our sermon is entitled, Not for Sale. What's our sermon today? Tell your neighbor our sermon today. I know you people get hungry, especially when it has clocked 12 o'clock. But did you see us eat from up front here? Was there anything sub from up front here? So we are all hungry. So let us, what is our sermon today? Our sermon is entitled, Not for Sale. And our sermon has been taken from the book of Proverbs, is the text that you want to consider this morning. The book of Proverbs chapter 23, we are reading verse 23. Proverbs chapter 23, we are reading verse 23. Proverbs 23, verses 23, is the text that you want to consider this morning. The scripture says in the New King James Version, Buy the what? Buy the truth and sell it. What does the scripture say? Buy the truth and do what? Do not sell it. Common sense tells us that therefore, when we have gotten the truth, the truth is not for what? For sale. Buy the truth and do not sell it. Also wisdom and instruction and understanding. Once you get the truth and you uphold it, then the added packages to this includes wisdom, instruction, and understanding. Let us pray. Divine Father in heaven, we want to thank you so much for inviting all of us, young and old, those who are experienced in this Christian life, and those of us who are still growing in this Christian life. We want to thank you because your house has been made a house of prayer for everybody, and that is why we have come. Our prayer there for this particular morning is that you are going to speak to us in the beauty of your holiness. That Divine Father, at the end of this message, we shall have been immersed deeply into the providence and abundance of your grace. And Divine Father, at the end of it all, we may be a people who have been packaged and sealed for eternity. It's our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Not for sale. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, buying and selling has become the culture of this life. Buying and selling is a necessity of life. 
people buy items and sell them. I have seen people who buy very expensive clothes and they sell clothes. People buy electronics and they sell electronics. People buy cars and they sell cars. We have seen people who have bought very expensive houses and they sell houses. People buy lands or plots and they sell them when it matures and the economy becomes good because buying and selling is a necessity of life. People buy books and they sell books. People buy furniture and they sell furniture. I've seen people who buy animals and they sell animals. And therefore, brothers and sisters, it is no doubt that buying and selling is a necessity of life. It is a normal reality. in a world of buying and what? And selling. But this morning, what is our sermon? What is our sermon this morning? Not for sale. In as much, brother, in as much as brothers and sisters, there, there are things that we can buy and sell. In this contemporary world and in this country, there are some things that are not for sale. In this country, there are some things that are not for sale. You see, there are some lands and plots or plots that are not for sale. And the owner puts a very big billboard or a notice board together with the contact of the owner. And then the billboard uh, or, or rather the notice board says, this land or plot is not for what? And should somebody try to sell it to you, please call this one. Because this is the original owner. Some plots or lands are not for sale. Brothers and sisters, in this country, in the medical background, maternal and child health services in the government are not for what? They are not for what, brothers and sisters? So just make sure after conceiving, and then you conceive so that you, you stay in the pregnancy for nine months. to procure ARVs in order to help our brothers and sisters these ARVs are not for sale in the government facility when malaria hits people in Baringo and some malaria endemic zone mosquito nets are not for what they are not for sale for pregnant mothers and children under the age of five they are not for sale they are not for sale I want you to appreciate that not everything is for what? Not everything is for what? And this morning, what is our sermon? Sell. The Bible talks about the truth as not being for sale. The Bible this morning talks to us that by the truth in Proverbs 23 verse 23, buy the truth and do not sell it because once we have the truth and we embrace that truth, we are going to get additional packages of wisdom and instruction and understanding. And by the way, the background of the book of Proverbs chapter 23 verse 23, we hear the voice of a father talking to his son. And the voice of the father counsel his son on the precepts and the way in which he should go. And so the Bible read verse chapter 23 verse 7, 10 all the way to verse 13, do not withhold correction from a child. And then verse 15, now the father comes on, if your heart is white, my heart will rejoice. Indeed, I myself, and as you go all the way, the Bible comes to the book of Proverbs chapter 23 verses 23, which says, buy the truth. Your version might say, get the truth. Your version might say, learn the truth. 
But remember, after getting the truth, remember that the truth is not for what? For sin. This morning, I want us to consider this text in two ways. I want to consider the truth, my fellow young people, as that word of God that sanctifies. And then we are going to consider the truth as the truth personified. To personify, and that is where our sermon will take its peak when we call truth personified. And I want to tell us this morning, fellow church members, the world today is full of counterfeit truths. The world today is full of false ideas. The world today is full of persuasion, which now the Father counsels the book of Proverbs that you have to be divergent of it. Because that truth will lead you nowhere, the truth that the world. What is believed to be acceptable, my fellow young people and my good church members who are here, might not be the truth. And they are called for us to synthesize and know that which is the truth according to the word of God, that which sanctifies. This is a call to be divergent in this contemporary world. And brothers and sisters, if it is not from the word of God, our call is for us to think twice. If it is not from the word of God, our call for us is to think twice. And therefore, what does the truth that the word of God gives us, help us to do? The book of John chapter 17, verse 17. John 17, verse 17. The scripture says, while Jesus is praying, for his disciples and praying for all of us. He says this, sanctify them by the words, by your truth. And what is the truth? The word of God becomes the truth that has been sanctified. And therefore, when we embrace the word of God, it sanctifies us in order to be divergent in this contemporary world. When we get that truth, when we buy the truth, and I will tell you what is to buy the truth in the second part of this message, so that we are able to understand the truth which is the word of God is able to sanctify us. And when the word of God sanctifies us, it sanctifies us completely. It sanctifies our work. It sanctifies our offices so that our offices we have now entered a no corruption what? A no corruption what? Zone. When the truth sanctifies us, it sanctifies our bodies as young people. It sanctifies us so that we do not lure ourselves into the lust of the flesh. When the truth sanctifies us, when we heed precept by precepts unto it, the word of God saying, we get sanctified by it and we become divergent in this contemporary culture. Let's look at one person who was sanctified by the truth and we want to learn of his experience this morning and then I'll dismiss it and I will sit down. The book of Genesis chapter 39 is the verse that we all know, an encounter that we all know and I want to bring it to our attention once again this morning. The book of Genesis chapter 39 introduces to us a young man called who? Jesus to us a young man called who? Who was bought and put in whose house? In Potiphar's house. The Bible says in the book of Genesis chapter 39 verse 4 that Joseph found favor in who? In the sight of God. And in the sight of Potiphar because the Lord was with Joseph and he made him to prosper. And because Joseph found favor in the sight of his boss, after finding favor in the sight of God, the Bible says he was made an overseer or an administrator. Verse 6, the Bible says, let's read about Joseph in verse 6. The Bible says, he left all that he had in Joseph's hand, that is Potiphar, and he did not know what he had except for the bread which he did what? He ate. And the Bible says the turning point of this sermon, so of this particular encounter, so that we are able to bring Potiphar's wife here, this is the turning point. The Bible says now, Joseph was what? Joseph was what? 
in what? In form and what? Appearance. Let me describe for you how authors have packaged the handsomeness of Joseph. He was slightly tall. Tell your neighbor, neighbor. Joseph was slightly tall. He was not dark. Neither was he too black. Or neither was he too brown. He was chocolate in nature. The author says that he was the head and the entire body were in equal proportion. Neighbor, neighbor, Joseph was masculine. And so this man was handsome. I was trying to look where Joseph is this morning. I can't see any Joseph here. I'm only seeing myself. Hallelujah. Am I not handsome? Yes, I am. Bald headed. <laughs> Just to make sure that I fit in the picture. <clears throat> Potiphar's wife seduced him. And I will tell you how a certain author has described Potiphar's wife. The author says Potiphar's wife had the heir that was descended, beautiful, beautiful, welcoming. Now you didn't get that one. She had a pretty smile, Potiphar's wife. A rosemary legs, Potiphar's wife. A dimpled cheek, Potiphar's wife. An aqua eyes, Potiphar's wife. And a Coca-Cola bottle shaped body, Potiphar's wife. Very beautiful. So the environment allowed it. But in this beauty, Joseph saw the Lord. Joseph saw the Lord. In all this, Joseph stood for the truth that sanctifies us that we get from the word of God. The environment was conducive, but Joseph saw the Lord. Because the Lord had sanctified him with the truth that says thou shalt not commit adultery or fornication. And I want to say that when the culture demands that you say no, I'm asking you, on what ground do you say no? On what ground do we say no, my fellow young people? Because of fear of HIV? Because of fear of pregnancy? Because of fear of not getting caught? Because of the fear that he asked you on day one, after all, if he is to persist, I might get into the trap. But Joseph was divergent because of the truth and said no, because in all this he saw the Lord. I would have talked about Daniel. I would have talked about Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. I would have talked about Job, who God tells Satan, have you considered my servant who? Have you considered my servant Job? Because Job stood out divergent in his generation. And the question is, will we stand in our generation? Will we stand for the truth that sanctify us? Will we get the truth from the word of God and let us not sell that truth because the truth is not brothers and sisters? Not for sale. The greatest one to the world Ellen G. White says in her book, Education, is the want of what? Men. Men who will not be bought or what? Men who will stand for the truth, though the heavens do what? Fall. Men who in their inner souls are true and honest. The greatest want of the world is not the want of the learned people. The greatest want of the world is the want of men and women who will not fear to call sin by its right name. Men whose conscience is true to duty as the needle to the what? To the poor. The question is, will you be sanctified by the truth? that comes from the word of God, will we embrace this truth but do not sell it because the truth is not for what brothers and sisters? It's not for what brothers and sisters? 
For about Jesus I would know. suggest for us this particular afternoon that the truth will make us to see God in the midst of the temptations of this life. The truth that comes from his word from the book of Genesis to Revelation will make us to see God so that we can be able to eschew that which is evil. God has presented us for us the truth and I'm calling all of us that we can get this truth and after getting this truth remember that this truth we cannot exchange for anything. We cannot measure it with the truths of this world. We cannot measure it with anything else because this word of God is the truth that sanctifies all of us. Hallelujah. And so we have to study it precept by precept. We have to study it Walk it and talk it. Because this is the truth that sanctifies us. I'm asking us this morning that when we get the truth, then we are not going to conform to the patterns of this world. In Romans chapter 12, verse 1 to 2, the Bible says this. What the Bible says? Romans chapter 12, verse 1 to 3 to 2. That is the book, that is able, that is the text that is able to make us to be divergent so that we are able to know that in this world we can be peculiar. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. The Bible says, I beseech you, therefore brethren, let's read together. I beseech you, therefore brethren, by the masses of who? The masses of God that you do what? You present yourself, you, your bodies as a living what? Holy and acceptable to who? Because this is your reasonable what? Verse 2 the Bible says, And do not do what? Conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the acceptable and perfect will of who? Will of God. I want to ask us, my fellow young people, will you stand of this world? The tide of peer pressure. Will we stand against the, tri the, the tide of temptation to substance abuse and alcoholism? I'm asking us out of love, fellow believers. Will we stand against the tide of social network and media influence? Allow me to ask out of love, young people who are going to school here. Will you stand against the tide of examination malpractices? I'm asking us. Will we stand against the tide of violence and cyberbullying and cyberspace crime in our generation? I'm asking us this morning out of love, will we stand against the tide of fashion that this world has to offer? And I want to tell you, yes you do what? Yes you can, yes you do what? Yes you can, yes I can. When we stand with the truth of the word of God, because the Bible says, buy the truth and do not do what? Sell it. For the truth is not for what? For sale. Let me go to the second part of this sermon as I sit down. When the Bible talks about buy the truth and sell it not, it forced me to look into the gospel meaning of this. And I want to thank God because the book of John chapter 14 verse 6 personifies the truth. John chapter 14, verse 6. It personifies the truth. Buy the truth and sell it not. Number one, buy the truth, the word of God that sanctifies us. And number two, buy the truth. Get this truth because this truth has been personified. And Jesus said to him, I am the word, what? the word, the truth and the word, brothers and sisters. 
and the life no one comes to the Father except through me. This text therefore tells us that truth can totally be the sanctified word of God, but this truth can also be Jesus himself, the word that became flesh. Hallelujah. That word that became flesh is the truth himself. And Jesus Christ can be bought, but Jesus Christ, I'm sorry, cannot be done what? Because Jesus, the truth, is to be bought, but it's not for what, brothers and sisters? Tell your neighbor, neighbor, Jesus is not for sale. Because Jesus is the truth. And Jesus himself is not for sale. But this morning I want to tell you the encounter of one person who sold Jesus. And you know him, Judas of Iscariot, in the book of Matthew chapter 26. My good elder, come I demonstrate something to you. The book of Matthew chapter 26. And I want, I want one person to come up front here. Young man, would you please come? I know elder, so you can't refuse. Please come. Please, you can't refuse. Yes. Let's read the scripture first. Matthew chapter 26. We are reading verses 14 to 16. As we go to conclude our sermon. Today, I want to share with us some few secrets in this scripture. So that we can get out of this place knowing that Jesus, the truth, is not for sale. Matthew chapter 26 verses 14 to 16. The Bible says this. Read with me. Then one of the what? Called who? Went to the chief priests and said, What are you willing to give me if I deliver my good to you. He had put Jesus on the market. The Bible says, and they counted out to him how many pieces of silver. Now, I like how King James Version talks about this and some few versions that talks about this. The King James Version, the original one says, they covenanted at how many pieces of silver? 30 pieces of silver. If they settled at 30 pieces of silver, they settled, elder, when the Bible says they settled, what comes? There must have been what? There must have been what? Bargaining. There must have been bargaining. When you take your good, this is now, you are a cow. You are what? Say a cow. A, cow. a small cow. Say a small cow. A small cow. Elder, you see, when I was young, I lived with my uncle, and I have an experience of selling cattle, and some sheep, and some goats. So I know how to bargain the cow to the market. Because you want the best value for your product. And so I will tell you, please buy this cow of mine, Give me here. We do like this, Elder. We do like this, then you put it down. I don't know if you have ever gone to the marketplace. <laughs> Elder, you seem so innocent. <laughs> and so it says, give me some 3,000 for this particular. Give me 3,000. I will give you 1,000. That is too small. Give me. <laughs> Let's put 2,000, Elder. Oh, 2,000 is a lot. This cow doesn't look so big. One five. But it has diarrhea for a long time. It has diarrhea. Come on, you are not getting embarrassed, you find, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes. So this cow, it has not diarrhea. This cow, this this goat. Goal. And when it gives birth to, 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 to how do you call the, 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 the child of a goat? Two kids. Two kids. Uh -huh. like, you know, you know English. Which one? Yes. So this cow, this cattle, this this goat of mine is good. Please add something. Ah. Uh. 1,800. Take it or leave it. I will not take that one, Elder. Please. This, this one is good. Look at the color of this, of this goat. Look at the color. Be, be a bit energetic, my goat, please. Be a bit energetic. Look this at the color. This one is malnourished. This uh, one. Okay. I don't have time. 2,000. Take it or leave it. I will take it. There. We go. Elder, you see. Yes. I wonder if they settle for that. That is exactly what Judas might have done about Jesus Christ. You see, known positive things about Jesus. And so Judas of Iscariot brought Jesus as a good to the market. 
And he told them, no, give me pieces of silver. A hundred, forget about it. We are going to give you ten. This man healed the sick. Give me eight, eight pieces of silver. Forget about it. This man is not liked by people around here. Huh? But you see, but you see, here, the one I'm talking about is the creator of the heavens and the earth. Please give me 80 pieces of silver. Forget about it. If you're not taking 20, we know how to get him ourselves. And we are going to do it ourselves. Um, I was there. He saved my life. This, he was there. This man, this man is can not, calm you a storm. He is not popular. And so, listen, we don't have time to waste. 30 pieces of silver. Take it or leave it. Okay. Deal? I will take it. Thank you. And so he sold Jesus so cheaply. The price of a slave. And Jesus went. Brothers and sisters, thank you so much, my elder. And Judas Iscariot is my story. That is your story. The story of Judas Iscariot is your story. You see, history has it that Judas of Iscariot was not called by Jesus. He called himself after seeing what Christ had done. His heart marveled at what Christ had done and he came to Christ and he who does not cast anyone accepted him into the fellowship. You see, for you to buy something, two things are needed. Number one, you must have the ability and you must have the willingness. You must have the ability and you must have the willingness. Some of us want to drive the best car. We are willing, but we are not our worth. We are, we are not able. Some of us, we want to buy good houses. We can buy it, but we are not doing what? Willing. And I want to tell us this. Though Jesus Christ had accepted Judas of Iscariot, it's like he bought him because the ability to accept Christ paid for his own price. Hallelujah. At the cross of Calvary, he paid for his own price. The question is, are you willing? And Judas was willing to follow him. That is our story. That is our story. When we take Jesus to the market, we have goodness of the Lord. We have tasted his goodness, young people. We have tasted his goodness, fellow church members. We know what God can do. When we look back, he brought us from the sick bed. When we look back as from our families, when our families were breaking down, Jesus has been a pillar. When we look back, this Jesus Christ was the one who gave us the employment. We know the goodness of the Lord. We know the goodness of the Lord. This is our story. This is my story. And we have tasted the goodness of the Lord in our academics. We have tasted the good in our marriage. We have tasted the goodness of the Lord in financial life. The question is, why are you selling Jesus, exchanging him? For something else. Jesus is not for what? Jesus is not for what? He accepted us so freely. But after you accept Christ. And entered into the waters of baptism. To sanctify the deal. I want to tell you. He is not for sale. And so you are asking me. World full of agony, pain and distress. Because Jesus the greatest comforter. Has been sold. Why is the world full of sickness? The has been sold. Why is the world full of economic crisis now the earth has been sold? Why does the one lack peace war all over? The prince of peace has been done what? Has been sold. Why is the world full of darkness? Because the world has sold Christ, the light of the world. And I'm asking you, Judas of Iscariot sold it because of the love of money. How do we sell Jesus? As young people, how have you sold him? As my fellow church members, have you sold Jesus out of your life because of the fame? Have you sold Jesus cheaply because of the lust of the flesh? I'm asking out of love. Have you? I like Nigerian movies. How many like Nigerian movies? Afro cinema continues. Listen, because I know you. You won't be here in the afternoon, so I know you. How many like Afro cinema? Con and so I like Nigerian movies. I'm a Niger fan. Oh. I'm a Niger what? Niger fan. Oh. So there's this, this particular story, movie, of a certain man <coughs> in the family. 
And the head of the family who is the king of the family is called who? Oga. He's called who? Oga was taken captive by some few enemies of that family. And so they saw Oga going away, the breadwinner. Oga going away, the one who is always there for them. And when Oga was taken into captive, their heart got distressed. Their hearts got distressed. And they say, how then can we get our ogre back? So they went to the magician. And the magician told them that, listen, I want to tell you something. I want to there is this particular market that is called Kaleche. It's called what? Say it in Nigerian language. It's called Kaleche. It's called what? And when you go to Kaleche, you are going to get this precious fluid, precious liquid. And that liquid is called Okechuku. It's called what? It's called what? So go to where? Which market was that? Hope you have not forgotten. Which market was that? Which market was that? And that market has a precious fluid. What's the name of that precious fluid? Okechuku. Okay what? Okay what? When you go there, you are going to buy it. It is very, when you buy it, do this. You have a fountain somewhere. Oh yes, we have a fountain. And therefore, pour a liquid on that fountain. And when you pour this liquid on that fountain, it will turn red. And when it turns red, the firstborn must dip themselves seven times in that fountain. And then you will be coming back. And so they went. They bought what? What is the name of this liquid? What's the name of this liquid? And they went to which market? This fluid was only available in which market? Kaleche. They went and bought that fluid. And when they bought that fluid, they poured it into the pool of a bathtub somewhere. And the water turned red. And so the first time, first time, not yet. Second time, not yet. Third time, not yet. Fourth time, not yet. Sixth and then the seventh time, Oga started to come. Oga started to do what? They tell you, brothers and sisters, at Calvary, at Calvary, which market is Calvary? Which market is Calvary? Which market is Calvary? There is a precious fluid. What is the name of that fluid? Ah! Oh, of Jesus Christ. That has filled the fountain. And when we dip our that fountain, Jesus Christ is redeemable. Hallelujah. Buy the truth and sell it not. Because that is not for sale. Jesus is not for what? For sale. Now I want to tell us that that opportunities is ours today. To come to the fountain. We can have our Jesus back. To make us divergent. In this contemporary world. To make us experience Jesus again. In our families. In our church. At our workplace. We need Jesus Christ back. Because he is redeemable. But we have to be in time. Life at best is very brief. Please let's put that one together. So that we can sing it together. And I will have my few friends here sing with me together. And I want to ask us if the of Calvary that Jesus Christ can be redeemed. Him. If you want that experience, I want to call us now. We want to sing this song. It will be projected here so that we are able to appreciate this. It's on the desktop so we can put it there. So that we can be able to understand that Jesus Christ is redeemable and we can redeem him again this particular. Life at best is very brief, like a fruit of a life, like a building of a chef, in time, fleeting days are telling fast that the die will soon be gone, and the time, and the fatal life, it just be. 
Gracious Father God in heaven, with all humility before the throne of grace we stand. Father, we want to be in time, for we have heard your voice speaking in our hearts. A group of youth, thy servants whom you bought with that precious blood of Calvary, Lord, they have come because they need truth to dwell in them. And Lord, it is their desire and it is our desire that we may not sell because Lord, you are not for sale. Amen. Father God in heaven, may thy words in our lives. Let thy words transform us, change us, sanctify us. And day by day, as we approach the second coming, oh dear God, help us to walk in the way of graciousness. Father God, we want to pray forgiveness of the sins that we have committed early alone, knowingly and unknowingly, Lord. You are the only one who is able to read the hearts of men and women. And Father God, may you search us, investigate us, and anything that is evil within ourselves. Father God, may you remove, may you use that we may be acceptable before the throne of grace. Thank you for the man servant that has brought this word to us. In your blessing him mightily. And Father God, as we move out from this house of worship, how we pray that Lord, our hearts be filled, we be transformed, and day by day, remind us that you are not for sale, that we may not sell you in any form, in any way. That's our humble prayer. 
For we pray, breathing and trusting. Sabbath. I hope you have all been blessed and kindly let us be practical about what we will rise up to the song hymn number 327 and we will do one stanza because of time and kindly request the choristers to help us sing hymn 329 sorry 329 choristers that we will get the truth, the sanctified word, so that we can be sanctified, so that we can be able to be very much divergent in this contemporary world, because that truth is not for sale. We want to thank you for Jesus Christ, who is the truth personified, who when he becomes in our lives, but the Lord in heaven is all that we have. We want to see accepted us to into his fellowship cheaply, our preciously divine Father, own blood, and therefore, it's like we brought him because he brought himself for us. And Divine Father, now that we have him, help us not to sell him because we have to have life. We want to have life in this world and life eternal. This Jesus is not for sale. It's our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll remain standing for song number two and four. service. I want to invite all of us for another exciting program that begins at exactly 2.30. Uh, the youth have told me that in the afternoon the discussion will be entitled The Four C's of Life. C, eh? 